Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Battle of the Browsers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Cupzilla. Now, this is a browser a few of you have recommended to me before, and I've been trying it now on and off for probably somewhere between four and six months, and I've got to say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, it basically renders the kind of performance and features that we expect from the likes of Firefox and Chrome, but while at the same time being all part of a lightweight browsing experience. So, to look at this browser just off the bat, you would be forgiven for thinking that it is just the Qt version of the Epiphany browser, the browser that is part of like the GNOME applications. Now that's not a bad browser. It's a little light on features, but if you're looking for a for a browser that integrates well with GNOME, then then web slash epiphany, whatever you want to call it, is fine. This is this is a, a step up, I feel. I, I feel that this is a step up. So of course this is this is a native Qt application. Um so it would naturally fit better within things like um, LXQT and the KDE environments. But I'm running it here on GNOME, and I've run it on XFCE with zero problems, zero issues. It looks great. It themes well. It themes naturally. That's great. One of the things that, of course, Epiphany was lacking was a bookmarks bar. And it seemed that they did this intentionally to minimize the user interface. I actually like the bookmarks bar. It, I have a lot of websites that I go to regularly. And instead of having loads of tabs up, I like just I can just click on a... A thing and open up a new tab. Easy as that. Uh, and it is. It is very, very snappy. It's a good multimedia browser. It supports all of the standard video streaming and video on demand services. As you can see here, if you go to youtube.com forward slash HTML5, you can kind of see what kind of video device, uh, video codecs your browser supports. It's got the lot here. I'm going to just take a look through the preferences window here because this tells you quite a lot so it gives you as you can see here all of the standard kinds of you know what's your home page it gives you some appearance things so you can you can mess around with themes um it gives you some oh tabs tab behavior so it, it gives you that's quite i think that's probably more than than what chrome gets you browsing so yeah you can actually get the pepper flash plugin if you want to it's available in the aur on arch based distributions or elsewhere on um on other distributions so you can actually run an, an uh, up-to-date instance of Flash in the browser, um, the same type of Flash that is maintained by Chromium and and Google. So, And you can also decide to allow or disallow JavaScript. I would love it if browsers came very similar to the Brave browser, where you could decide to have JavaScript on or off just as a flick of a switch. I think NoScript does allow for that, but having the built-in browser support would be nice. Um, not to mention that, of course, NoScript only works on Firefox and Firefox-based browsers, which is... Kind of limiting, I guess. Uh, but of course, U Matrix is U Matrix isn't bad. But again, it U U Matrix is is uh, it's not um, stupid simple. Um, U Block Origin is not bad actually. But anyway, I am uh, digressing. There are ways that you can disable JavaScript in reasonably easy ways on other browsers. Um, this can you, this can only be done through the preferences menu, of course. So if you if you want to be selective with JavaScript, that's this is probably not the uh, the browser for you. Chooses fonts. Uh, gives you a notification, gives you some privacy, so you can manage the cookies, all that kind of stuff. So it's, and it also gives you the do not track uh, header. So, all in all, good features, good features, well featured. Well, you know, it's um, it's a full featured browser, more or less. I think I can't think of anything that it is missing. Now, obviously, with browsers that are outside of Chrome, Chromium, and Firefox, you are not going to have like the add-on infrastructure, which some people consider to be a good thing, some people consider to be uh, a limitation. Um, as long as the browser does what I want it to do, which is the basic tasks of a browser, I'm more than happy using other Linux applications to basically make up the difference. I don't necessarily need a screenshot website screenshot tool in my browser. It helps if I'm running GNOME, uh, if I'm help it helps if I'm running Chromium, and I'm just sort of taking a screenshot of a web page. But then again, there are Linux applications that can do that pretty much just as well. So um, it doesn't typically bother me that this that, that browsers that aren't Chromium and, and Firefox don't have as many uh, third-party plugins. That's fine. Um, and to be honest, it's probably best to treat these kind of browsers as, as if they've got no plugins because there's li little guarantee, if any, there's no guarantee, that um, any third-party plugins for minor browsers will be supported for any length of time. So that's, again, something to, to also bear in mind. I mean, they could be, but you're, you're sort of taking it on the good faith of whoever's developing the plugin itself. So, in fact, I don't even know, does this even accept third-party plugins? Um, 
yes, uh, extensions. So you've got a few here, but these seem to be ones that um, auto scroll, flash cookie manager, gnome keyring passwords, K wallet passwords. So you can actually you can integrate the safe passwords into the brow uh, into KDE or your gnome wallet, I believe. Um, And I'm just gonna try, I'm just trying to find out uh, if, yeah. So yeah, and you've even got a password manager. That, that that looks that's not not a bad password manager either. And I've actually had a lot of success using the password manager when I've been using it uh, in a more serious capacity. One of the things I do like about it is that it doesn't have the cloud syncing service that Firefox and and Chrome and even Chromium has. I consider this not to be a feature really at all, but to, to but to be a security hazard, really, um, because it's a single point of failure, which is always a security um, concern, really. It's, it's certainly something you want to avoid. Um, and it's also giving a, an awful lot of information straight up to, um, well, to a, to a company that you may not want to give it to. It's entirely, obviously, these things are entirely your choice, but it's not like um, backing up your bookmarks and if necessary, your browser settings is really that much of a chore that you have to skimp on privacy and security. But that's just my thoughts. So I, I you know, I, I'm more than happy just to just to, to back up my config files locally in local storage, and and that'll be enough. Um, and and that's enough for me. But um, to each their own. A good browser, it's certainly worth a recommendation. I do like it. It's lightweight. It it runs well. It runs. Uh, each of these um, tabs is a separate instance. It's a separate uh, session. It's a, it's a separate um, process, which makes for very smooth browsing. A very smooth browsing experience. It allows you to move across tabs very quickly. So when one tab's loading, you can just move over to another, and then whilst the tab is loading in the background, it's going to have like pretty much zero impact on on other pages. So it uh, it makes for a very smooth browsing experience. But I got to say, you know, these these are provisions that you've got to sort of uh, look at for yourselves and work out uh, what you require and how to go about it. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to waffle on too much about what is. A pretty straightforward browser really but it is one that I recommend you guys check out especially if you're on Qt environments if you're if you're looking for a browser that sits natively within your desktop environment it looks pretty native in, in GNOME as you can see here and XFCE um, good browser highly recommend it um, thank you guys for for suggesting it so that's about it for me today until next time I've been Chris Ware uh, you've been having fun with no you haven't that was the wrong outro I was gonna give you the fun with flags outro I was going to say, uh, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. And um, what I'll do is at the end slate, I will put a link to my latest podcast that I've done with some friends. It's over on a different channel. But if you guys are interested in just a little bit of casual banter with me and some friends, um, you can go and check that out. And if you want to subscribe to that channel for weekly podcasts, you can also do that as well. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.